intermittent fasting worse for insulin sensitivity? What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about intermittent fasting versus regular calorie restriction and its effects on continuous glucose monitoring and insulin sensitivity. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment Oh, the algorithm. All right, so this week we are looking at a 12 week randomized control trial where people were either randomized to an early time restricted eating with calorie restriction, so they were in a calorie deficit, or just regular old calorie restriction. And they equated calories between the two groups and they had people wear a continuous glucose monitor for the entire day, looked at their like overall glucose excursions, I believe area under the curve of glucose. They also were looking at HOMA IR, which is a measure of insulin sensitivity, as well as things like fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and HbA1c. They had people either in basically a continuous meal feeding group where they're just eating less calories uh, to lose weight, or they had them in a group doing early time restricted eating where they told them that they had to condense all of their food intake in a 10 hour window. So they're feeding during a 10 hour window and fasting for the rest of the day. Now, I can already hear the comments coming. Well, Lane, it's only a 14 hour fast. Okay, keep in mind, they said less than a 10 hour window. So a 10 hour feeding window is the max that they were doing, but they could do it in six, they could do it in eight. It was less than 10. And I think the important thing to point out is many of the advocates for intermittent fasting, one of the claims they make is, well, the longer you fast, the more you can control your insulin. You keep insulin low, and that's gonna make it easier to lose body fat and improve insulin sensitivity, and it's gonna keep glucose down more. One of the things that I have said is, yeah, you're gonna have low insulin while you're in your fasting period, but then if you're, let's say, matching calories, if we're comparing apples to apples, with someone who's just doing regular calorie restriction and eating continuously throughout the day, Sure, they're gonna have more increases in glucose throughout the day, more increases in insulin throughout the day, but because they're spread out, they're gonna be smaller area under the curve. Whereas somebody who's condensing all that food intake into say like six, eight or 10 hours, sure their insulin's gonna be lower other times of the day, but because they're eating more during that feeding window, their amplitude and duration of response, the area under the curve is probably gonna come out to be about the same as long as their calorie and macronutrient intake looks similar. I thought this was a cool study because since they're using CGMs, they're gonna be able to see basically monitoring their glucose over 24 hour periods of time, who has bigger changes. And what they found was actually, there ended up being basically no difference between the groups for almost anything they measured at the end of the study. So between group, no difference. But they did see in some of the things they measured, I think like uh, the mean glucose excursions increased in the time-restricted eating group, whereas they decreased over time in just the regular calorie-restricted group. Now, it wasn't a big change. And again, at the end of the study, there weren't differences between the groups, but we did see some trends over time in terms of their response. Now, does this mean that I'm saying that intermittent fasting is bad for you know, blood glucose and these sorts of things. And that's not what I'm saying. In fact, I think HOMA IR was also similar where it tended to go down over time in the regular calorie restricted group and tended to go up a little bit in the intermittent fasting group. So I'm not saying intermittent fasting is bad for glucose, bad for insulin, but I think this study kind of highlights a point I've been making, which is it doesn't appear to be better. Because again, if you're eating the same amount of food, if, you're, if we are comparing apples to apples, two groups of people, both eating the same amount of calories and similar macronutrients, the fasting group is going to have low insulin for a longer period of time. But during the time that they're feeding, their area under the curve is gonna be higher than the people who are eating you know, more spread out throughout the day. And so it looks like the overall effect, at least based on this data, is probably no different. And some people will say, well, how do you reconcile this with some of the other data out there that does show better improvements with time-restricted eating? Great question, and I think the answer lies in when they are testing these people. What I mean by that is many of these studies on time-restricted eating have people fasting for greater periods of time after their last meal if they're time-restricted eating. For example, if they finish eating at 6 p.m., whereas a continuous feeding group, maybe their last meal is at 9 p.m., they have three hours longer that they are fasting. And if you go measure something like insulin, fasting insulin, 
fasting glucose, some measures of insulin sensitivity, after a longer fast, those measurements will be a little bit better. But that isn't necessarily indicative of what's happening long term. They just fasted for a longer period of time. And so you're actually not measuring apples to apples. The reason I think this study is cool is because they're wearing a continuous glucose monitor. They're looking at the overall response over 24 hours, which is what we frankly care about. So again, it's one study. I'm not ready to say nail in the coffin, time of eating, doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. It obviously works. Very consistently in studies, we see that time restricted eating can improve insulin sensitivity, it can improve metabolic health, and it can help with weight loss. But it appears to function by reducing energy intake and getting people to lose body fat. And that appears to be the main, or honestly, the reason it does work. It doesn't appear to be better than daily calorie restriction if calories are equated between groups. Because even though overall on the mean, we don't see differences. On the average, we don't see differences. I'm not an average. You're not an average. The person next to you is not an average. You're an individual data point. And while there's probably not differences physiologically in how this stuff is happening, it doesn't probably have to do with you know, longer fasting periods of insulin and autophagy and all this kind of stuff. If it allows you to reduce your food intake and it feels easier and less stressful than say counting your calories or eating low carb or eating low fat or whatever it is, then for you, that is a really useful tool. And who cares if it doesn't have magic benefits for you, if it's easier to follow, it's still a great possible tool. People will hear what I'm saying. Actually, I don't think they hear what I'm actually saying. They just insert their own interpretation of what I'm saying and think that I'm saying that intermittent fasting is worthless or it doesn't work. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the effects don't appear to be magical. But that's why when it comes to like dietary strategies, our app Carbon Diet Coach, we don't pigeonhole you into one diet. We don't make you eat four meals a day or five meals a day or six meals a day or one meal a day. You can pick any number of meals that you want to eat and you can choose your dietary strategy of whatever feels easiest for you, whether it's low fat, balanced, low carb, ketogenic, plant-based. You have all those different options because at the end of the day, compliance is the science. And we see very consistently that regardless of diet, the more compliant people are, the better the outcome they get. So we are trying to facilitate maximum compliance. So if you need help with nutrition, Carbon Diet Coach, hard to beat, less than $10 a month. I mean, you'd pay 20 times more than that for good nutrition coaching. And not only does it give you nutritional recommendations, it adjusts them as you progress to make sure that you continue progressing towards your goal. And it's not just a weight loss app. We have muscle gain, maintenance. We have reverse dieting. There's a lot of different options. Click the link in the description. Go download and subscribe to it. It's excellent. I personally use it and I recommend it to everyone. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you next week.